Hi everyone, welcome back to school and welcome to today's session on Seesaw Skills, an introduction for our school year for 2021. In today's session, we hope to accomplish these three objectives. Number one, getting an idea of why we'll be using this skills feature in Seesaw for Schools this year. Two, what skills have already been uploaded as well as skills that still need to be uploaded by either teachers or myself. And three, using the skills and how to get started with that by tagging and rating skills. All right, so why have we decided to adopt the skills feature in our Seesaw for Schools account this year? There are actually a lot of reasons why, one, that we pay for it. But aside from that, uh, a lot of good reasons. It gives us some real-time insights and data into our students' progress towards learning goals. It adds a layer of intentionality as we plan for uh, lessons and instruction and adds an element of academic rigor. It helps with the alignment, assessment, and reporting of our curriculum and standards. And it supports the school's mission, vision, and strategic goals. So let's talk about what skills have already been added and our plan for adding additional skills as we move forward. I have currently uploaded English Language Arts Common Core Skills and Math Common Core Skills, including the anchor standards across all grade levels, as well as grade level standards from kindergarten through fifth grade. Additionally, PYP ATL skills have been added and ISTE student standards as well. Standards or skills that have not yet been added to our school dashboard include science and social studies, as these are meant to be added as units are planned in PYP kickoff meetings and updated in Atlas, as well as art, music, and PE standards, which I can teach you how to upload, or I can work with you to get them in a template that works for a bulk upload, and I can do those. Let's have a look at how you can access these skills within your Seesaw dashboard. In this test class, I've selected grade five as the grade level. So the skills that come up will only be shown for all grade levels or grade five. You will see here that you can manage the skills, manage the rating scale and the color scheme. In manage skills, this is where you can add a new skill that has not yet been added to the school dashboard. Things like social studies, science, PE, art, and music. The rating scale is set as a default to four stars, which aligns to our report cards, but you can change the color scheme and how it displays. If you click on skills, you will note that I have not yet tagged anything with a skill. So if you click there, you will see that you haven't tagged any and you will need to go to your activities. I have selected an activity that was pre-made edited the activity, and then scrolled down to More Options. When I click More Options, you will see that I can add teacher notes, but also tag skills from a bank of available skills. Here you will see all grade level skills, including the PYP ATLs and Anchor Standards and ISTE Standards. For those that are grade level specific, you see that I can only select grade five. You can select up to 10 skills per activity that you would like to rate. Select the skills that you'd like to attach to the activity or lesson and press the green check button when you're finished. Tagging skills to activities will save you a lot of work in the long run. Although you can tag skills after an assignment has been assigned, it's less work to do it beforehand because then you can just rate them as student responses come in. As assignments are being given out and received and student responses recorded in the skills checklist, this is what you will begin to see. Along the top, you will see all of the skills that have been assigned to your students and ones that you've marked with ratings. 
Along the other side, you will see a list of your students' names. You can isolate the view by student or by skill. The number in each box is how many assignments you've received and tagged with that skill. The color is the rating on the most recent assignment of that skill. It's important to note that teachers and the administrators on our Seesaw for Schools account are the only ones that will see the skill ratings view. You can take screenshots or share them during parent-teacher conferences with individual parents, but this is not something that students or parents have access to. So I know that was a very brief introduction, but really the best way to learn how to use the skills feature is to get in there and get your hands dirty with some practice. So the expectations from now are that we are practicing using this feature and developing our own skills in that way by attaching tagging skills to activities and assignments and assigning ratings as student responses come in. We will be asking for feedback as the weeks move on, just to get an idea of what part of this is working well, how we can support you, uh, or maybe what needs to be changed. I hope to have ongoing conversations and collaboration with you to help uh, strengthen your skill set in this way. And um, I look forward to seeing you all at kickoff meetings. That's it for now. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope that this was helpful in getting you started. If you have additional questions, I will be having office hours where you can drop in and ask any questions, or you can reach out to me at any time in a Teams chat or via email. I will see you at office hours and throughout the week. Bye.